<laughs> Welcome back for part two of our little series here in regards to the sixth season of The Circle. Today I want to take a look at that second chunk of episodes, the four that came out on Wednesday, and start right off the top by saying I don't think anybody was really all that surprised, at least I wasn't, that Miles went out of his way to kind of pick on and ultimately let go of Steffi. It seemed pretty clear from the get-go that those Miles and Steffi weren't going to be two people that were going to jive in the long term, and I'm not overly shocked that that's where he ended up going. So to get her off the show and out of the way kind of early, you know, I think that was expected. But more than that, my maybe my bigger problem or the thing I'm still scratching my head about, the thing I don't really understand so far, is why bring in the AI for just a few episodes? I thought something that would be fun to watch over the course of the season would be to see if they could figure out who Max was. If they could, somebody could decipher that he was the AI. To only have him be a part of three or four episodes and then just fade off into the sunset was kind of a weird gimmick, I think. Uh, and a bit of a shame, a bit of a missed opportunity. You know, hopefully the next time around, if they decide to do something like that, they'll let that program be a part of the game a little longer. You know, I think it would be funny if they had him go the whole season and he ended up winning it all. I don't think that would have been the case, though, in this season in particular with Max, I never got the vibe that he was the front runner. He was the one people were really jiving with and had them at that number one spot. And we can see that in the rankings as well. It's not like he was the influencer at the end of the day. So I don't know. I thought that was a little strange. Again, a little gimmicky and kind of unfortunate. Episode six, we get an introduction to two new players in Autumn and Jordan. I would say overall, I'm pretty lukewarm on Iron either of them as of right now. I think it's very clear that Jordan is here to play a very cutthroat game, but really I think the same could be said for most of the players at this point. For me, there are only really two that stand out that people I would consider trustworthy, people that if I were to have built an alliance with, I would feel comfortable with. And those would have to be Olivia or Brandon and Lauren as well. I think that out of the group as a whole, those two feel like the people I can rely on. This episode gives us some insight into kind of people's personalities and how everyone feels about a couple of different scenarios. And then the fallout and takeaway from this sets up some interesting drama in episode seven and eight. At the start of episode seven, we see Cassie get the boot, puts the group in an interesting spot, bringing us back down to just one country girl in autumn. Again, overall, not really something I was overly surprised by. To this point, and frankly, through these first eight episodes, really the biggest thing that I find the most interesting is that Paul has managed to hang on this long. I would say out of any of the players or contestants, that's the one I'm least into, the one that I hope gets axed sooner more than later. But the big takeaway from episode seven has to be the addition of the ride or die concept, pairing up two contestants in their fates. If one ends up going home, the other does as well. And again, how this all really ends up playing out in episode eight. Listen, I really like Lauren, I do, but I cannot understand what was going through her mind when she threw Autumn under the bus, when she threw her ride or die, her partner, and then kind of just the rock down the hill that was what came next. Just everybody choosing to really just shit on her in the harshest kind of way. I don't really know if a lot of that was deserved. I was shocked that it just kind of kept going one after the other. And again, I'm not sure what was going through Lauren's head in those mo in that first moment when she decided to throw her under the bus, I think trying to maybe throw some smoke away from her, but clearly underestimating just to a type of an impact that would have. In the end though, it worked out, I guess, at least in the short term. Here at the end of this last episode, the two that are up on the chopping block are Kyle and Paul. And it'll be interesting to see at the start of episode nine if one of them chooses to sacrifice themselves or they both choose to sacrifice themselves. Neither chooses to sacrifice themselves, whatever it may be. I really hope Paul just ends up going home. It's unfortunate that Kyle has to be a part of that as well. I think more than anything right now, I'm interested to see just again how that plays out here next Wednesday. Let me know in the comments though, what are some some of your thoughts on these most recent four episodes. Is there a pairing that you really like? Is there a player you really like that you're jiving with? I'd love to read all about that down there. And until next time, have a great time curling up on the couch and enjoying a good show.